we are talking about summertime injuries. That's um, it. And I think everybody thinks summertime injuries, we think of fireworks and you already talked about that. But I mean, the other things that I think about, especially here in Florida, is we're near water. We have a bunch of people swimming in swimming pools and things like that. So have you, you know, ran into cases where people are just, you know, having issues, whether it's on the boat or in a swimming pool or anything that we think about summer related, because picnic doesn't really result in injuries, hopefully. Well, um, but have you ran into any like boating accident cases or swimming pool accidents or anything like that, Lance? All of the above. I mean, you have, so the boating accident cases are, are very similar in a lot of ways to what you run into with cars. You know, people run. But. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely some, some difference differences is in how the cases are legally handled but as far as you know you got you have collisions you have people falling out of boats and getting running over run over um, accidents associated with water sports and things of that nature now they are a different animal when it comes to boating accidents you have different laws that apply to those there's maritime regulations um, and there's things that we generally wouldn't face in a typical auto accident case but you have there's a lot of corollaries you know you have similar insurances you have uh, liability coverage on boats. You have even uninsured motorists or uninsured boaters coverage, which yeah, is something that's, that... Yeah, that's how I say it. It sounds funny every time yeah. I read it. Um, so, for sure, there, we, we have a lot of those cases and we you know, handled a lot of them over the years. But the responsibility, as Lance said, is the same as basically the driver of the boat has to be using reasonable care. And right. again, there's, there's a few exceptions, but a lot of the cases that I ran into, it's not actually another boat hitting somebody. It's our client who is, you know, a tourist down here and just as a captain who isn't doing something responsible, whether it's yeah. going out when the weather conditions aren't right or not doing the proper right of way and things like that, which I actually had to take my captain's license thing because I'm 30, under 35 whenever uh, I took my boating thing. But you have to learn who has the right of way and things like that. But also we've seen cases recently. I mean, I don't know if you follow Panama City Fishing or Qualified Captain. There's boats that hit the shore, the jetties and things like that, and yep. um, can result in really serious injuries. But those are usually common sense type things. What about people, you know, if, you know, something bad happens at a swimming pool or something like that? Because you can imagine the types of injuries that happen there. What, what happens in those situations? Is someone responsible themselves if they jump in and the, the pool's too shallow? Well, I mean, it could be in some instances. I mean, if it's, it's something that's been warned about, then yeah, that, that person would kind of be assuming the risk, but not really, that's not really the way it's phrased under Florida law anymore. But yes, you can certainly have liability based on a kind of a hidden hazard. So if I see a pool and I jump into the pool thinking that it's a certain depth and it turns out it's not that depth, that could be something that the owner of the pool would be responsible for. Uh, however, there is some element of negligence on your part for jumping into a pool that you don't know the depth of. So it's, it's kind of an offsetting uh, potential liability there. Now, on the other hand, if there's a marker or something denoting that, hey, this pool's 10 foot deep and you jump into it and it turns out it's only five foot deep, then that's a huge problem for the person who's led you to believe that it would be safe to jump in at that, uh, into that pool. And I mean, I've had cases where people are just horsing around around pools, you know, and even though the pool's involved, it's really more the activities are just careless or negligent to begin with. You have people horsing around, shoving one another into the pool, uh, chicken fighting, that sort of thing. And those can lead to injuries and, and the folks involved can certainly be responsible for that as well. And a lot of times pool injuries, it's someone, no one's intentionally meaning to hurt anybody. It's they're not using reasonable right. care, as we say. Yeah. Or they're doing something negligent or unreasonable when somebody gets hurt. It's not like we're trying to drown somebody like, you know, I used to do with my younger brother and try to, <laughs> you know, take him down. It's yeah. more an accident happens. Yeah, um, I mean, most of the cases that we handle are nobody's really <laughs> intentionally injuring someone. It's just there's a lapse in judgment. Maybe they're not paying as close of attention as they should be or they're doing something that's everybody would you know, say, hey, that was an accident, but in reality, it was somebody not acting as carefully as, as they should have. It's not normally intentional acts that we're handling cases associated with. And you were talking about uh, essentially one person doing something wrong, maybe, but I've had quite a few cases where children are hurt because the parents are not paying attention, and that applies, you know, during summertime especially. When it's hot out, the parents want to stay in the air conditioning or yeah. whatever it is, and they leave the kids, they leave the kids unsupervised. Have you ran into issues where, you know, mom and dad are separated, so dad's watch watching the kids and, 
you know, just doesn't monitor them and then somebody gets hurt or something like that? Uh, not necessarily in that context, but yeah, I mean, you do have negligent supervision cases and that's certainly a, a core cause of action that you'd have available to you under Florida law. If somebody, you know, if you leave your children with a, a friend and you Which, expect Yeah, that's those, almost what I was thinking yeah, about because I, mean, I have those cases right now. Yeah, I've, I've dealt with that more in the school setting or some sort of a daycare setting where you have an obligation to supervise as well. But if you leave your friend or your child with a friend, the expectation is that the parent's going to supervise what's going on and if the parent's negligent in their supervision they can be responsible for that so certainly those cases exist i you know that i've dealt with it more in the in the supervised setting of like a school or a daycare or something of that nature but it's also applies to private citizens as well and we handle that all the time and what i tell most of my clients is we're usually looking at an insurance claim mm -hmm. so what type of insurance is applicable in those types of claims where the parent just isn't paying attention and a kid either, I don't want to say a bad thing, but you know, has a pool injury or falls really bad but shouldn't have and breaks their arm and needs surgery or what type of insurance is applicable to parents who have their kid hurt while someone else is watching them? Yeah. Most of the time it's going to be a homeowner's policy. I mean, you do, you know, if it's somebody that's renting, maybe a renter's policy, but it's going to be a personal liability policy and normally you those are attached to the property that you own so I mean you can purchase policies that are strictly just for personal liability even if you don't have some sort of property interest but most of the time it's going to be a renter's policy or homeowner's policy generally a homeowner's policy that you'd be dealing with and we run into that all the time and most of my clients are I don't want to say confused but surprised that a homeowner's policy is applicable in situations where something happens either off or really far off their property um, is that something that you run into a lot where homeowners is kicking in where, you know, I do something negligent here, not on my property, but, you know, my homeowner's insurance is covering it? Yeah, I mean, typically anything that's not related to an auto accident in some way or related to the use of an automobile or uh, perhaps some sort of occupation that you have, if you commit any sort of negligence that falls outside of those parameters, normally your homeowner's policy is going to be the one that falls back that it falls back on. And you know, most folks probably think that homeowners policies is generally designed to cover the property damage, their property. That's what I think. Um, <laughs> and you know, and make repairs after hurricanes and things of that nature. But it does, the liability coverages will follow you around. So if you do something negligent, even if it's off of your property, if you do something negligent that results in someone being injured, a lot of times your homeowners policy is going to provide coverage for that. The situations where you, it, oftentimes wouldn't is like I said if it involves an, an automobile because you're supposed to have auto insurance or if it involves your profession then you you're supposed to have professional liability insurance so that that's the kind of things where you generally wouldn't see coverages if it's something that falls in in the scope of a business or employment or if it involved an automobile.